On today's EM and Five, we're going to talk about lateral chest x-ray pathology. This is our checklist. It's a little daunting, so let's break it down. We're going to look at the vertebral column, the diaphragms, cardiac silhouette, the lung markings themselves, and then we have this last checklist of things I don't want you to forget. So let's start off with the vertebral column. We discussed this before, that as we go down the vertebral column, it should be getting darker because there's more lung down there and less soft tissue. That should be the same for the lungs, so that's checkbox one. Here's an example where going down the vertebral column, we see that it starts getting a little whiter down here. And we don't see anything on this chest x-ray because this is actually correlated with a left lower lobe pneumonia that's hidden behind the cardiac silhouette. And here's another example. As we go down, it definitely starts getting a lot whiter, and that's associated with a left lower lobe collapse. Number two on the checklist is the diaphragms. We're going to be identifying them, looking for any shadowing or where they become a little bit fuzzy. Maybe that's where there's an infiltrate or some fluid, and we're looking for flattening. Now here's the same example of the left lower lobe collapse, and how many diaphragms do you see here? There's just the one, and that's because the left lower lobe collapse obscures the diaphragm completely, so very important to identify the diaphragms. And here's an example of some flattening because of increased lung volume and a patient that has COPD compared to the normal side. Number three on the checklist is the cardiac silhouette. We're going to look for the fact that it's nice and uniform, so no abrupt changes. And we're also going to look for the borders, again, trying to identify any shadowing. So remember, it should be nice and uniform all the way across. Here's an example where, as we look, there's definitely a consolidation right here, which does correlate with a left lung consolidation. Here's another example. We see that there's definitely something abnormal over here, and that correlates with the right middle lobe. And sure enough, this patient has a right middle lobe infiltrate. This poor patient also happens to have a left lower lobe infiltrate as well. And lastly, we look at each of the cardiac borders. Remember, the right ventricle is forward, left ventricle, and left atrium. Look for any shadowing that could indicate an infiltrate. Number four on the checklist, we want to look at the lungs themselves. We're looking for opacities, any shadows, any fissures, and once we've identified something that's abnormal, we want to figure out which lobe it's in. So here's an example where we see a fissure going across. Now we shouldn't normally see fissures unless there's fluid or consolidation on one side or the other. And now we have to figure out is this a right or a left sided. We look over here, we can see there's definitely something on the left side and this does correlate with the left upper lobe collapse. But one thing I want to point out is this isn't where we would expect to see the fissure, is it? We think it would be back here. But anytime there's collapse or atelectasis or consolidation, it brings the fissure up towards the area of that collapse. So that's why the fissure is not quite in the place we expect it to be. Here's another example. We can see the fissure. That's abnormal. And we look over on our PA and we see that it's on the right side and upper. And this does correlate with the right upper lobe consolidation. Here's another example. This one's pretty easy. We have this lovely wedge shape right here, which correlates to the right on our PA. So this is a right middle lobe consolidation. Here's one more example of a right middle lobe atelectasis. We can see this wedge across the heart border, and over here the heart border is obscured, correlates with the right middle lobe. Another example, we see there's some consolidation down here as our vertebral column goes down, it gets wider, we can only see one diaphragm on our PA, it correlates with the left side, so this is a left lower lobe consolidation. The last checkbox, we'll call it the don't let it trick you checkbox. We're going to talk about the cardiac incisura and the four darkenings. The cardiac incisura is actually a normal finding on a lateral chest x-ray. Here it is right here. Um, but it looks like bad things, so it can trick you sometimes. The pathophysiology behind it is that the right lung comes all the way forward and hits the anterior chest well. Whereas the left lung, sometimes if you have cardiomegaly or maybe a large pericardial fat pad, that lung doesn't come all the way forward, and you have this gap where you would expect some more air or more dark space on the x-ray that then is filled in with a more white appearance. So you can see here, it looks like there's something here. You just have to think about that. In 3D, that left lung is coming around, and instead of going all the way forward to the chest wall, it hits up against the heart, and it creates this odd shadow right here. Here you can see it comes in a whole lot of different shapes and sizes. Some are big and small, so just keep that in mind if you see some kind of abnormality there. That's the cardiac incisura. It's normal. And last, we have the four darkenings. Quick thing to check off before you close your x-ray and call it normal. These are four areas where you should see dark in the lateral chest x-ray. We already talked about the vertebral column, so as we go down, it should get darker. That's number one. Number two is your claustrophrenic angles. They should be nice and dark. Make sure you don't see an effusion or consolidation there. Last two are behind the heart and above the heart. So these are the five things I want you to check off when you're looking at a lateral chest x-ray. Look at the vertebral column, the diaphragms, cardiac silhouette, the lung markings, and last, check off our areas of four darkenings and make sure that cardiac incisura doesn't trick you. Here's the references, and thanks for joining us on EMN5.